Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mythlok with your host Nitin Nair where we explore the world and find out mythology and characters which you probably never heard of but are highly regarded and respected in the cultures that we originate from. There are some mythologies around the world that are extremely popular which includes Egyptian mythology, Indian mythology, Southeast Asian mythology and South American mythology which have really captured the imagination of the world through countless retellings, adaptations, research, more so because of the stuff that they have left behind in the form of pyramids or structures or written texts. But then there are other mythologies as well who have a very significant importance in the cultures of the people but have slowly been forgotten or have been phased out over the years. Now one such mythology that is facing this kind of disregard or is not getting that kind of importance that it really needs is European mythology. Although there are characters and creatures from these mythologies who have actually taken the forefront to really building up a certain kind of interest. For example, in the Game of Thrones series, you have the dragons that completely ignited the whole craze for mythical creatures in Europe. All the dragons are not confined to European mythology and have a very important role to play in Chinese, Japanese and some other Southeast Asian mythologies. The whole concept of having a dragon as a mythical creature and also different TV shows that actually come up promoting various cultures have become a very important part of keeping those mythologies alive. Norse mythology is also a part of European mythology but we've kept that separate and we'll be exploring that on its own because the whole pantheon and the amazing backstories, folklore, tales and myths associated with it, we feel that it deserves its own standing in the whole collection. Now, one of the more prominent mythologies in European mythology is Celtic mythology. Celtic mythicism has been popular throughout the ages because of the concept of knights, which extended beyond mythology and there have been actual facts or actual people who have been associated with these myths. So there is the whole element of believing that they are not myths, but they are more real in nature, which is common across all mythologies and all active cultures who practice their mythology. Especially stuff like Indian mythology where the Hindus believe that it's not mythology, it's actual recordings of history and all the characters are real and they are actually God. Which is similar once again to uh, the uh, Celtic mythology who believe that characters such as King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table, uh, Knights of the Templar, adventures that they have undertaken over the years also tend to be real. So we keep in mind those sensitivities and we do not claim that any of those things are not real nor do we claim that any of these mythologies are real either. Now one of these characters who actually fall into this category being whether he is actually real or he is just a figment of mythical text or a story that has been written by an author is the character of Oshin. Oshin was regarded as the greatest poet of Ireland and also as a warrior in the Oceanic or the Fenian cycle of the Irish side of Celtic mythology. Now he is the narrator of many of the poems attributed to him and is believed to be the son of Fionn Mac Cumhill and Sad, who in turn was the daughter of Bob Dean. The name Oisin translates to young deer. Oisin is classified as a mortal within Mithra because he has a start point and a definite end point, which in other words is birth and death in terms of mythology. Oshin once again is peculiar in this manner because for a period of time he was immortal. We can get into that later. Oshin was awarded eternal youth and remained young for over 300 years during his stay in Tirnanog, where he ruled as a king. He once yearned to meet his friends in Ireland and proceeded to his home on a horse gifted by his father-in-law. Now, he was warned that he should not dismount the horse or let his feet touch the ground as the 300 years would catch up with him, making him an old female man. Although there are different accounts of why he dismounted the horse, he ended up being an old man and is represented as such going forward. So majority of the representation of Oshin and the different 
stories and poems in which he was a character, he is predominantly a young man who lived a long, fruitful life. But then towards the end of his story, he is depicted as an old, feeble man, more than 300 years old, who is barely able to stand. Now, when we start exploring the family of Oshin, it is believed that uh, Sad, the mother of Oshin, was turned to a deer by a fair Dioshin, and that Fion caught her but did not kill her. Fion gave up hunting and married Sad soon after she became pregnant with Oshin. Now, this prompted Fion to take her back, to turn her back into a deer, and release her into the wild. How Oshin met his father is also widely debated, and there are multiple stories which chronicle the meeting. In the adventure tale Oshin in Tirna Nob, a fairy woman named Niamchin Oyer, the daughter of Mananan Mithlil, comes to him. She tells him that if he marries her, she would shed the current form of having a pig's head and return to her former form. This is followed by Oshin becoming the king when they return to Tirna Nob or the land of the young. They are blessed with sons Oscar and Finn and a daughter Lorna Mai. Now this is where the story of how Oshin gets his eternal youth comes into play and how he lives out a long fruitful life in the uh, land of the young with his wife and children. Now Oshin was considered to be a master storyteller and also equally adept in warfare and have many tales of conquest attributed to him. But predominantly he is known to be a storyteller and a poet and even a writer who chronicled most of the events and adventures and stories that are part of Celtic mythology. Now, in a tale of conflict between him and St. Patrick, Oshin is said to have emerged victorious after killing a bull single-handed, and he used that victory as proof of his valor and convinced St. Patrick that he deserves the respect uh, that he commands, and also the fact that he get, then got to determine where he would be buried once he is dead. Now, the site where Oshin is believed to be buried is disputed. It is believed that the gravesite is in Glenlamond in Scotland or in nine glens of Antrim known as Ocean's Grave. The megalithic Fort Kane is located on a hillside in Lubitawish near the Glenan River outside the village of Cushendo and is believed to be the ancient burial place of Ocean. Now here is another classic character that we can see resemblance across various other mythologies of a master storyteller and one who actually is eternally young and also has a lot of importance attached to him because he's the one who's actually retelling the stories of the time. So if you look at Indian mythology, there is the character of Narada who goes around, he's eternally young and he's also the person who actually passes on the stories to the various sages who then document them. So you, as you can see, uh, even Celtic mythology in its limited form is really interesting and the stories that come would relate to eternal youth characters who are much more than what they seem to be and stories of mortals who actually go beyond being a regular human being are very much common. We will continue to explore a lot more of Celtic mythology and bring you the stories and characters that you have probably never heard of. Thank you very much for tuning in and this is your host Nitin Nair reminding you once again that Mythlog is the whole of mythology.